Hey, I'm Maddie Stratton, staff developer advocate here at Pulumi, and going to take a few minutes to talk about cloud engineering at scale. Uh, really glad to have you uh, be part of Pulumi Up, and here we go. So since the early 2010s, enterprises uh, have embarked on a migration from on-premise data centers to the cloud. And this was driven by a few things. So number one, it was our business need to increase innovation and reduce costs. Uh, secondly, we have to satisfy the increased customer needs for access to our products and services. Consumers are demanding more, customers are demanding more, we need to provide it. And then the inability to scale, to compete with other businesses that have more resources. When we combine all these uh, requirements together, the cloud makes a lot of sense. It provided on-demand infrastructure that allowed near infinite scalability, a reduction of upfront infrastructure capital expenditures. We had increased availability and uptime of infrastructure and global geographic reach. It hits all these three levels, all these three buttons. What could possibly go wrong? Well, <laughs> when we see the, uh, the rise and the evolution of the modern cloud, and this complexity just continues to grow. There was an explosion in the number of cloud services and APIs over time, and our legacy tools and practices just can't scale to meet the needs of this modern cloud. And you know, we, we're really doing this shift from building and operating individual services, sometimes even at the operating system level, to composing and consuming cloud services. The enterprise spend on cloud vastly exceeds capital expenditures and our on-premise innovation practices just can't keep up with the cloud service provider innovation. We're trying to keep up with AWS, GCP and Azure and this scale and complexity require some new approaches uh, to how we address our business agility as we move along. So there's a lot of things that that bring the challenge in the modern cloud and things that that give us thought there's thousands of managed services across aws gcp and azure there are over 6300 different services for compute databases queues and more 6300 is a lot right the fragmentation of the eco ecosystems when we look across all of these different places that we're building we have a lot of legacy infrastructure as code systems, systems that we used to use to build individual operating systems on VMs. Uh, it's a different way to think about things when we're thinking about cloud services. And it's great to give developers more freedom. This drives innovation and agility, but it does increase our security profile and the risk. We're using multiple clouds. We have lots of different vendors for our SaaS solutions. We have different types of hybrid solutions. And we're moving, we've moved away from these classic three-tier applications to now these distributed architectures. You know, there was a time when as an ops person, I could reason in my head about the entire stack that my company was using of our applications, and that day is gone. We have these distributed architectures. And our platform teams grow to, to create more bottlenecks as much as they're trying to drive agility. And the big question is, how do we accomplish reliability and repeatability of all of this innovation at scale? Now, the traditional line between development and operations has blurred with the rise of shared responsibility brought by these DevOps cultural practices that we're all embracing. So our operations and infrastructure teams, they've shifted and are providing more platform-like systems and applying software engineering practices to cloud infrastructure, which is driven by the rise of API capabilities with these cloud services. This lets us have more automation and more code-based management, which is great. And then now as a result, our developers are increasingly involved in the provisioning of that infrastructure. And in the meantime, our compliance teams, They've gained more insight into the software development lifecycle and the cloud itself through those APIs. So this is great, but it also is creating more challenges. These groups have to work together and build more bridges. And against these challenges, some new best practices started to develop amongst enterprises. Infrastructure development and compliance teams all have to work as one organization to deliver and manage these modern cloud applications. And we call that cloud engineering which is 
taking standard software engineering practices and tools across our infrastructure, application development, and compliance teams to tame the complexity of the modern cloud. These practices of cloud engineering are composed of three pillars, which are build, deploy, and manage. When we think about build, this is we're defining cloud infrastructure using standard programming languages, which gives us access to constructs like conditionals, loops, functions, classes. These programming languages have been built over multiple decades to tame complexity at scale, uh, the very complexity that our modern cloud operates and needs to tackle. So we're already addressing this. And these teams can share and reuse common infrastructure components just like any software package, right? This significantly improves their ability to cut down on boilerplate and also lets us enforce the good practices we want across our whole organization. And this allows us to apply existing frameworks, uh, development environments, test frameworks, and tools. Across Deploy, we say the cloud engineering teams deliver both infrastructure and application code through a unified process, which increases our efficiency and quality. So we're running our unit property and integration tests to validate our infrastructure changes before deploying. And we're programmatically deploying our infrastructure through APIs or orchestration workflows, moving away from command line interface driven workflows and tracking with end-to-end -end change histories with our ability to easily roll back these changes if we have to. And finally, these cloud engineering teams manage and secure their cloud infrastructure and applications through repeatable, auditable code and management processes, which really enable a visibility. So teams use policy as code programmable guardrails to enforce security, best practices, and cost across all of the infrastructure. And this enables deeper visibility, which increases the collaboration between infrastructure development and compliance teams and helps reduce miscommunication and friction amongst them. So how does Pulumi help with each of these pillars of cloud engineering that we've just talked about? So when we think about the build pillar, uh, this is where the Pulumi SDK and Pulumi packages, which is what allows us to uh, define our infrastructure using a general purpose programming language, and then roll that up into a, a package that can be shared inside of our enterprise for repeatability. For deploy, we can use uh, common practices using the Pulumi CLI, but also the Pulumi Automation API, which lets us embed deploy, whether it's inside of our applications, bringing it programmatically or using our CI CD pipelines. And finally, manage. So things like Pulumi CrossGuard and our, our Pulumi console and the Pulumi service are where they're helping give us that visibility and having a single dashboard for our cloud infrastructure and applications as we're continuing to work across all of our related teams. So the Pulumi cloud engineering platform, this is helping us tame the modern cloud complexity by providing that consistent approach to over 60 cloud providers. We're reducing risk through automation. We're accelerating deployment velocity and then helping provide better guardrails around reliability and security using things like policy as code. Now, there are three stages of adopting cloud engineering successfully. And each of these stages comes with certain processes and organizational mindsets and changes. And different components of the Pulumi uh, cloud engineering platform support different parts of this journey. Now, you don't have to necessarily implement every single stage to be successful, but as you progress further through each stage, it maximizes the benefits, the reduction of complexity and risk as we move through these stages. And we've had, uh, we've got several customers who are innovating with Pulumi to kind of help address each of these areas. When we think about Mercedes-Benz, they're using Pulumi for uh, developers to be able to self-service approved infrastructure. So that's giving us better guardrails for reliability. Atlassian saw over 50% reduction in time spent just on cloud maintenance. So this is reducing risk. Fauna shortened their time to market from weeks to days. You talk about increasing and accelerating development velocity. And finally, Snowflake has um, 
their platform team enabled its developers to deploy standardized Kubernetes environments across AWS, Azure, Google Cloud with a self-service platform that's powered by Pulumi, taming modern cloud complexity. But you don't have to hear just from me. I have a special guest joining me for the rest of this presentation, and it's my uh, absolute pleasure to introduce Justin Fitzhugh from Snowflake. Justin, thanks for joining me here at Pulumi Up. It's a real pleasure to have you. Thank you, Maddie, for having me. I, I, I'm very excited to be here and talk with you today. I have so many questions. Uh, transformation stories are my favorite stories, but we, we don't have time to dig into all of them. But I'd love to hear a little bit about the transformation that Snowflake had to go through in adopting these, these practices. Uh, can, you, can you tell me a little bit of the story? Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, Snowflake is an interesting organization in that um, we, we run the same software across all three major cloud providers. So we have kind of a unique challenge in that the, the, the software has the same software has to operate with the same functionality across all of them. And so when you start to look at how do we build platforms, how do we build systems, um, being able to automate is, is absolutely critical. But let me go into the story a bit. So um, I've joined Snowflake a little over three and a half years ago. And I think when, you know, uh, I always see organizations kind of go through different phases. And I'd say that um, Snowflake at the time was in a phase where we had a team, it was called DevOps at the time. Um, it was very overwhelmed with incoming dependencies and tickets. So there was a massive list of tickets and requests that were coming in and, and really um, felt like it was uh, kind of the blocker or, or standing in the way of, um, while incredibly important in the foundation, but it, it, was, it was, we were in a reactive and, and a blocking state where we were constantly too much too much was requested of us and, and, and there was a lot of manual processes to try to keep up and the company is scaling exponentially. Um, and so I think that was really an inflection point where it was time to kind of evolve what we were doing from, a, from an infrastructure perspective. Um, I think we also saw not only just from a um, personnel point of view and a, and a resource point of view, but also from a quality point of view. Um, these are all manual human processes reading from, you know, maybe a wiki or, 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 an, or tribal knowledge. Um, so we started to see impact on quality where humans make mistakes. They, even if they run the same process, they're, they're going to make mistakes. And so we were starting to see issues in terms of process scaling from an efficiency, from a quality point of view. Um, and I think it, that was really our inflection point that we wanted to kind of make a shift. And, and so what we did is we said, look, how, how are we going to change this organization from a reactive kind of operational culture to an engineering culture and really treat it as if another, it's just another engineering team within the engineering organization, which I'm a part of um, and my organization is a part of. Um, and, and really looking at, um, how, we're just an engineering team focused on infrastructure as opposed to an operations team that's operating in infrastructure. And so some of the core foundational pieces that we, that we look for is, how can we look at every change to the infrastructure as a commit to a code base? How does it go through the same processes that you'd see in the rest of software engineering? How do we do things like engineering reviews where we, where we go through the rest of engineering to talk about the changes and, 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 and um, and architectures and software we're building in, in that same that same mantra, and so I think we we generally got got buy into that. Um, we we needed to we needed to start shifting kind of the talent both that we had and that we were hiring more towards kind of a an engineering focus, a, more of a software engineer with infrastructure focus as opposed to an operations person who maybe knew how to script here or there. Um, and and the focus really was how are we writing software, not scripts? How are we using functional programming languages to define the infrastructure? And then really ruthlessly go after every kind of manual task that we, or, or manual process that we had and, and figure out if, how, and when we can start to manage it. But, but this was a, I, I, we're still not 100% of the way through it. We've made significant progress and this is very much a journey. Um, but I think that that was really kind of where we came from, kind of that realization we had as we went through that exponential scale and, and kind of how we've progressed along that journey. And again, like I said, we're not, we're not there yet, but certainly made really strong progress with, um, you know, with a lot of the tools and Pulumi specifically as a great partner. I, I have one follow up on, on that. So you talked about, you know, following the same principles that the rest of the engineering organization did around code review, around pipelines and stuff. So are they pretty much the same? I mean, you kind of had a good strong culture around that for how you were building the software. So do you follow the same principles in your, your infrastructure team? Like not conceptually, but actually like practically? Yeah, so I, I think we start conceptually. <laughs> um, and we say, how can we, and, and where, how can we do that? And I think that's where kind of our, um, where our, our, st our starting point is. But 
um, I think naturally there are going to be some some differences. For example, um, Snowflake happens to operate on a on a weekly release cycle, and it's not something that we could support from an infrastructure perspective. But we do look at the same processes of adapting. How do we do change control? How do we do um, code reviews? How do we how do we look at the same kind of um, pipeline testing um, and deployment? And so I would say similar, not identical, but we continue actually to try to move more in that direction. Um, and I, I think it's a continuum rather than a kind of a hard switch. Um, and so we keep pushing kind of down that path, but I think we also need to maintain some of, uh, a bit more agility than than maybe kind of the, the core product can have. So I wouldn't say it's it's one for one, but it's 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 definitely starting from that angle and seeing why we can't, as opposed to kind of the the inverse of that. And kind of run off and do your own thing. It was yeah yeah yeah. So yeah. so it, it's it's definitely everyone likes to talk about you know get up on stage at, at events and talk about their grand success and everything. So I'd like to know what were what were the most challenging obstacles that you had to overcome because when everything goes smoothly and amazing that's not a that's not very interesting so i, I want to know what, what what were the blockers what were the <clears throat> obstacles especially around the people yeah yeah i i think that um any kind of trains or change or transformation of a team is is hard is really challenging and, and i think people by nature tend to resist that change and i think it's easy like you said to stand up and say yes cloud engineering we're going to look like software engineers we're going to look like a software engineering team and that sounds great um when push comes to shove and when you get down to brass tacks, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more difficult. Like, what does that mean in terms of, for example, how do you release or how do you make a, a small DNS change or something? How do you even think about testing some of these things? How do you think about that workflow? So I think that um, the theory part was great and kind of selling that vision was, was fairly easy. But when you try to translate that into how do you do every day and how do you continue to move at the velocity that the company is growing, stuff like is it, like I said, it's gone through an, an incredible amount of growth. And so the business isn't going to slow down to, to, to give you time to make this change. And so you have to make this change at the same time um, while bringing in uh, new talent on the software engineering side, helping the existing team to to transform and pick up that skill set and not feel like there's a divergence between the two or a split between the two of the operations versus engineering team. And, and how do you kind of keep that a cohesive vision, I think is, is really challenging and something we, we continue to work through today, um, which is to say, it's really, uh, it will be difficult if you get into a state of old guard versus new guard type of thing. And so how do you, how do you kind of bring all that together? Because what, what's really critical to remember is that, that it's not a better way. It's just an evolution. And those skills that you had before equal, are as important or even more important in this new world. And so how do you kind of interweave those together, I think is the, the, the biggest challenge. And again, quite, quite easier said than done. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's kind of this constant thing that, that you really have to keep a lot of focus on and, and help and, and, and watch for minor variations and kind of, kind of bring it back and keep everyone going the same direction. So I'd say that, that's really kind of that, that culture aspect and keeping the team moving in the direction and having a, a singular vision, I think is, is, has, has been a challenge and something that you have to be very resolute in terms of uh, continuing to, to move forward with. I always like to say, you know, tech, tech is easy. People are hard. And yeah. I was just thinking, I was like, you know, I mean, I've been part of the DevOps community and banging the drum of DevOps for almost 10 years now. And I'm yeah. still adjusting myself from multiple decades of being an ops to thinking like a software engineer. So yeah. uh, everybody, as you're working through these transformations, it's like Justin said, it's it's not easy uh, and it will continually, continually go. So uh, it's, we, we're continuing to make our steps. So um I guess we, we've just, just got a, a few minutes left, but just if you are thinking about overall with your transition, if you had to sort of name your, the top three challenges you had to overcome um, or are still trying to overcome as the case may be, uh, what, what would those be? Yeah, I mean, I'd go back a little bit to this cultural shift where you're, you're shifting a culture of an organization um, and, and you, you know, you, you have to be super careful and super cognizant of not um, devaluing the the operational aspect and, and some of those runtime things that have to happen and and I think by nature it's like oh everything should be software well not the people who maybe are doing some of these operational pieces can feel devalued in fact that's incredibly important it's how do you kind of bring that along and how do you move them forward and, and not devalue that piece but say this is how we're going to make your job better and easier so I think that that cultural shift internally was difficult I'll also say from an external, from the rest of the company perspective, the, the, the company viewed this team in a certain way, what they were capable of, what their confidence level is in them, you know, what, 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 uh, what they could expect from them. And, and that's been a, a long process to change. And it, you know, I think it's easy to lose trust, but incredibly hard to gain trust. And not to say it was a loss of trust, but to build that respect and build that trust takes 
lots of time of, of building, deploying software. I mean, I can remember times where, you know, the first time we shipped a kind of a major software components, um, you know, there was lots of questions of external people should be reviewing it. And the team said, wait, what, why? I, I don't understand. And so really shifting the perspective of the, of the organization of what we do, I think is, 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 was, was a challenge. And then lastly, I'll say, you know, the hiring bar. So because you're shifting what you're looking for, you don't necessarily have the staff internally to understand what to look for in Swedes. And if you go to another Swede team, that, that may not be applicable. But so shifting that bar, keeping it high, and then, and then uh, bringing that talent in to kind of help drive that, the, the cloud engineering piece forward and, and, and make that shift, I think was, was definitely a, a, a challenge. And, and these are kind of aside that the technical challenges, I think are certainly there, but I would say kind of these pieces are, are at least for me, were, were things that I really spent a lot of time focusing on and, and continue to focus on quite a bit. Amazing. Uh, time goes by way too fast as always. Yeah. Just, a, just a, a little bit of an overview of that transformation. I have a hundred more questions. I'm sure everybody else has a lot of questions, but unfortunately we are, we are out of time. Justin, thank you for, for giving us your time, sharing your story. Everyone, thank you for being part of Pulumi Up and let's move on with even more things to learn about. Sounds great. Thank, thanks, buddy.